Welcome class to Van Herrick 101. The Van Herrick test is a slit lamp examination of the anterior chamber of the eye, which is the space between the iris and the cornea. We use this technique to help confirm the results of a gonio examination. In this class, we will be discussing the method, technique, interpretation and limitations of the Van Herrick test. Now let's turn to the PowerPoint for some more information on the Van Herrick. What is the Van Herrick test? In simple terms, the Van Herrick test is an assessment of the depth of the anterior chamber or the angle of the eye. It utilises light to examine how wide the gap between the cornea and the iris is. So we're all probably wondering, when would we use this test? Firstly, this test allows us to grade how open an individual's angle is using a grading system. Secondly, it is used to screen for angle closure, which can lead to angle closure glaucoma. This type of glaucoma is a major cause of visual morbidity in the world. By testing the anterior chamber depth, we can see whether the patient is at risk of this. The Van Herry can also be used to confirm or refute the gonioscopy exam results, or when the patient is physically impaired and may not be able to see it through a gonioscopy exam. Before performing the Van Herrick procedure, it is crucial to maintain both the patient and clinician's safety and comfortability. The clinician must wash and sanitise their hands thoroughly before each and every patient. In addition to this, the slit lamp must also be cleaned correctly. This can be done by utilising either alcohol swabs or any disinfectant wipes available. The clinician will need to start by wiping both the chin and the headrest of the slit lamp and any surrounding surface areas that the patient or clinician may come into contact with, for instance the joystick or the patient's grip handle. Once this has been done, the patient can be positioned onto the slit lamp. If the patient wears any correction, it must be removed prior and the examiner is to adjust the eyepieces to their refractive error. Ensure you instruct the patient confidently and clearly on how to position themselves before a slit lamp. The patient will need to place their chin on the chin rest and push their forehead against the bar positioned at the top of the slit lamp. It is important both the examiner and the patient are comfortable to avoid any neck and back strain. The patient can hold onto the handles if it is more comfortable for them. To adjust the height of the chin rest, rotate the chin rest adjustment knob until the patient's outer canthus is in line with the indicator mark located on the slit lamp bar. Lastly, ensure patient is fixated correctly by asking them to look at the clinician's ear or at a distance target. To perform the test, we bring the light in from the temporal side and place it at the edge of the cornea, about 2 to 4 millimetres from the limbus. From this point, we slowly bring the beam in nasally and stop at the beginning of the limbus. This is when we first see the anterior chamber. The image we can see has two beams of light, one is from the cornea and the other from the iris. The two lights are separated by a space. This space is what we are most interested in, as it indicates the depth of the chamber. So that was an introduction into the Van Herrick technique and now we'll just watch a quick video of our clinician performing the skill. Before the patient comes in we will set up the slit lamp for the Van Herrick test and we'll just turn on the machine here and have it on the highest illumination which is the two. So now we'll be setting up the pupil distance and my refractive error. So I'll just turn it here for my pupil distance and I'll turn this for my refractive error. And we'll also have the magnification 10 times and on the 1.6 there. So now we will change the settings of the slit lamp. So we want it on the white filter. And we want it on the highest illumination. And just down here, we want it to the narrowest beam. and we'll change it to go 60 degrees temporally to the patient's right eye. And we'll just lock that one in there. Set up the slit lamp, I'll get the patient to come in so we can set her up as well. Hi Lily, how are you today? I'm Christine and I'm just doing my pop just for today. So I'll get you to pop in. And take a seat when you're ready. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll just take your glasses off for you and I'll put them aside for you. 
And while you're doing that, I'll just clean up this chin and forehead press. So I'm just going to have to align you. So I'll get you to come forward a little bit and I'm just going to move this up a little bit here. Are you comfortable there? Okay, and I'm just going to move this higher up. So we've got alignment here. Okay, so the test won't hurt at all. Um, all there will be is a light shining in your eye. Um, I'll just go turn off the light now. Okay. So, I'll just get you to look over at my ear then. Just looking at my ear. That's good. Okay. We're all done for today. Thank you very much. Thank you too. So that was how to perform the test, and now we'll watch how to interpret our findings. When calculating the angle grade, we are determining how wide the space between the two lights is. As we know, one light is projected from the cornea and the other from the iris. Therefore, the depth of the angle can be described as the distance between these two lights. Specifically, we are comparing the distance between the two lights to the width of the corneal light projection. The Van Herrick system incorporates a five-step grading scale. If the distance between the two lights is the same width or greater as the corneal light, we grade the angle as 4. This means that the angle is open and angle closure is very unlikely. If the distance between the two lights is half the width of the corneal light, we grade the angle as 3, indicating angle closure is unlikely. If the distance between the two lights is a quarter of the corneal light, the angle is given a grade of 2, meaning angle closure is possible. If the distance between the two lights is less than a quarter of the corneal light width, we determine the angle as grade 1 and assume angle closure is likely. Grade 0 is given to an angle where there is no gap between the two slits of light, confirming the angle is closed. A grading of 2 or less places a patient at risk of angle closure glaucoma. So based on Lily's exam, what would you grade her angle as? Yes? A three. Three. And what did you think? I think it's a four. A four. So in this example, most likely be a grade four, but it is a subjective test to the examiner, so both can be correct. So, so far, the Van Hoey sounds like a really useful test. However, there are some limitations, and we'll discuss these further. A few limitations exist with the Van Herrick procedure. Van Herrick can indicate how open an angle is, but it provides no information about the structures of the angle. It can miss important features such as peripheral anterior synechi, angle recession and neovascularization. It can also be difficult to determine the angle in non-pigmented eyes. In this case, looking for the corneal wedge can help, but it can be difficult to identify. The accuracy of the angle grade can be affected by the integrity of the peripheral cornea as well as age-related degenerative conditions such as arcus senilis. The Van Herrick grade can also be overestimated in some patients, particularly those with plateau iris conformation or if the beam was moved too far onto the cornea. The Van Herrick test is also limited in assessing the horizontal angles only, but angle closure tends to occur more commonly in the superior angle so therefore it can be missed. Although there is a grading system, the test is subjective to the examiner and opinions can differ amongst clinicians. In saying so, the Van Herrick test does have its advantages and is a great alternative to gonioscopy for many reasons. The risk of inducing an angle closure attack is greatly reduced as you make no contact with the eye. It can be used as an assessment of the angle in patients who are at risk of angle closure to reduce the risk of such complications. Midriatics can induce an angle closure attack in a patient with a narrow anterior chamber depth. These are not required to perform the Van Herrick examination, which further reduces the risk of an angle closure attack. As it is performed on the slit lamp, it is a greatly accessible test as it does not require any extra equipment or accessories. It is quick, non-invasive and does not place any unnecessary stress onto the patient. With good technique, results are accurate and reliable and are an important part in clinical assessment. So unfortunately, that's all we've got time for today. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, class dismissed. Thank you.
V V V H Productions V V V H Productions